But the real founder of this organisation was a visionary Australian statesman, Lionel Murphy. There are at least six books written about Lionel Murphy. And there's a one very impressive film. I'll show you a slide in a minute. Not one of them mentions the establishment of civil celebrants. It may turn out that this program is the most culturally reformist and the one which has most altered the nature of our society. Let me just show you something. They're the books. And the film is Mr. Neil is entitled to be an agitator. It's a wonderful film. One reason that um, it doesn't get a mention in the books, I think, is because it was so simply done. And there's the sentence, the three words, other suitable persons. That's us. And that was in the Marriage Act of 1961. And Lionel Murphy simply decided to enact it. Now Murphy told me the story himself. He told it to Lynn Noor and a few others here. He was kind of proud of it. This is, when I was a lecturer at uh, Victoria University, there was a theory of history that things happen when they need to happen, that individuals don't have much influence. <coughs> Someone always rises up. Let me disavow you of that straight away. This was one man's doing. And I can illustrate that because I've been over to England twice, to America, where I picked up my lovely wife, training civil soldiers. They've got no notion of it. They do it by all sorts of workarounds. But Murphy himself was opposed by um, his own staff. He was opposed by his fellow members of parliament. He was opposed by uh, the officials of the Labor Party. But he just had decided, he'd seen how secular people were humiliated in the registry office, picked with an indignity known as marriage. And, and he was so convinced of it that one night he stole into his own office. He found a piece of paper, a letter bit. He put it in a typewriter. No computers in those days, of course. He typed the first letter of appointment himself. He found an envelope and stamp with great difficulty. And he walked to a post box and posted it. And that was Stasi, the person who has the lovely distinction of being the first celebrant ever appointed in Australia, or it's not a too fine point in the world because this is a unique Australian program. She received the, uh, her appointment uh, in the mail a few days later, and uh, she treasures the letter to this day. That's Lois. Um, and then, and there's the letter, 19th of July, 1973. That's our founding day. Um, she, of course, treasures the letter. Now, do you young people here, um, I find it difficult, even embarrassing, to explain to you the world in which the Whitlam Murphy government intruded. The majority of Australian citizens had an allegiance to one of the two main Christian churches. And religious sectarianism was a basic curse of society. The main churches combined on few issues, but they did combine on one issue. Non-believers were to be humiliated and put in their place. Lionel Murphy was an anomaly. He was a humanist, he was a rationalist, and he had a Catholic background. He was an admirer of the American Constitution, and he simply believed, quote unquote, 
that all men are created equal. This is a direct quote, ladies, don't you? Yes. <laughs> as, I, as I told you, he was appalled at the indignity of the Sydney Registry Office. I'd like to, to explain the whole scene to you, but I do that too often. Um, and um, not only were secular people humiliated, but the churches humiliated their own followers. Divorced Catholics and divorced Anglicans um, were not allowed to be remarried in their church. So they had to go to the registry office. And to them, um, it was appalling too. So our primary constituency is secular people. Nine out of 10. That's what we, we are civil celebrants to give, bring dignity into the lives of secular people. A secondary constituency, a very secondary constituency, but we're entitled to exercise it, is, is to um, bring ceremonies of dignity to people who are rejected by the churches. It's gone on a long time. That was our origins. Um, so the celebrants I meet out there sometimes, and they distress me somewhat, because some of them think they're pseudo-clergy, some of them think they're New Age priests. Um, some, some think they're interfaith officiants. In a very secondary way, you could perhaps let that cross the line. But basically, you are civil celebrants for secular people. That's the majority of Australian people now. Lionel Murphy himself was a real radical. I mean that in a primary sense. He shocked the system. Let me tell you some of the ways he shocked it. His first shock was the appointment of women. This was a moment in history where the only ceremony providers in the world were men. It might be an occasional, rare, rare exception. The appointment of women, and mostly women, he did 99 appointments, 55 of them were women, uh, Absolutely, you know, there were men going around here, no, only men can do sermons. That was his first thing. And here's a little aside, a little aside is that the women who later on became bishops and priests in the Christian churches thanked Lionel Murphy for paving the way by appointing you. He helped the churches get equality. His second shock, and this is very relevant this morning because we had uh, Aboriginal, Indigenous, Korean people, whatever the current politically correct term is, but they were Aboriginal thing. He appointed Aborigines civil celebrants. Faith Bander was one. Lynn, who was the other? There's another prominent Aboriginal. Who was Lynn Moore? Yeah, do you remember the name of the other? Anyway, Aborigines had only been listed as humans six years before in the census. And, by the way, one of the people behind that was Lionel Murphy. His third shock to the system was the appointment of young people. Lois Darcy was a 26-year-old mother of two babies. Carol Asprey, now one then Carol Dixburn, was 24. Lynn Noor, who I'm very honoured to have with us today, was a smashing blonde, and still is it, by the way. <laughs> uh, 28, were you? 28, she was 28. We're all young people. Yeah, and that was unheard of. Young people doing the shocks, they're still coming. 